Hey there guys, welcome back to another video. We are on my laptop right now, as you can see by my uh, system status. And, um, well, this video is about, of course, what I've been doing with my quick shell over the weekend so far. And I figure I'd give you this today uh, because, you know, it's kind of fun to do. As you can see, uh, this thing has 3070. It's got 32 gigs of RAM. It's got, uh, you know, eight cores, 16 threads. And it's using Cache OS, which is great. And I just noticed that the available RAM there is a bit of an issue. It needs to be pushed up a little bit. But I've been designing my quick shell for both a laptop and a desktop, both triple monitors and single monitors. And um, it's definitely been very entertaining. So let's talk about what's different. As you can see, the layout up top is different. So now there's no appearance. Uh, instead, that's just the default placement when you open it. The bar has a brightness slider, but it only works when the transparency is maxed out. So if you look, there it is. And uh, it's a bit weird. But yeah, you can actually just set that to where you need to be and turn the brightness up and down if you need to. Or keep the transparency all the way up. You can that up and that down, you know, do whatever you need to. It's kind of weird. I'm still working on that part a little bit. Trying to add as many little features as I can, like the ability to turn off drop shadow and other stuff. And there's also bottom margin. So if you want it to float a little bit, uh, you can make it float off a little bit, as you can see. Let's try to make that a little more obvious for you. There you go. That's as obvious as I can make it. So now you can make the dock float. I know it's not much, but at least it's something. You could change the color of the drop shadow to red. Uh, if you want, like you can have a deep red just like this. There you go. I figured I'd add that in because there's someone out there who probably wants to deal with their drop shadow being a different color. There's always going to be something like that, right? So I figured I'd just uh, make that a little easier for people. You can also adjust the uh, blur radius, the vertical offset, the horizontal offset. The vertical offset's currently not working. It's For some reason, it's stuck on four, but that that's whatever. Um, I think enable dock and disable dock actually works now, which is good. Auto hide also works. Reveal on pressure works. The logo section has been completely redone. So now it will find all of the icons that you put inside the assets slash icon folder in dot config quick shell. Okay. So now you have your infinite selection. There's a ton of icons. There's 132 here. I took these all from arc menu, by the way, as a test. So you can... You could do whatever you want, but these are automatically included. I'm going to have to add that into my GitHub and everything like that. Uh, this is if you want blur. So again, see that? Yeah, I just need to find a way to deal with, uh, you know, transparency and other stuff here as well. So I'm going to add transparency settings here. And once that's done, have solid windows or blurry windows, whatever. Next thing is... I've added this. It's a Bing wallpaper downloader. So what it does is you select your resolution of wallpaper. You download the eight wallpapers. <laughs> uh, then you hit refresh. And uh, if there's anything new, they'll show them there. And I don't think there is. And it will only grab new wallpapers, by the way. I don't know why it spins around. I haven't figured that out yet, but as you can see, wallpaper does change the minute you click it because it uses uh, SWWW. It's really efficient and it works really, really well. So uh, that's definitely kind of cool. I'm so sorry that it spins. You should see it when it's downloading a lot of wallpaper. It will keep spinning and spinning and spinning. It actually made me dizzy. I don't know if I'm going to solve it or not, or if I like it or not, but I don't like this button being so wide, so I might actually thin this down. But yeah, um, these wallpapers will be downloaded into pictures and wallpapers. Okay, so this is where they'll appear. See, we have actually a new one right there and uh, a new one right there. So yeah, uh, I guess I have another issue to work out. Is it going to show the new wallpapers? Is come on, show the wallpapers. Yeah, I still have some stuff to work out, but 
I, uh, it, it's, it's definitely an interesting ongoing concept for sure. So there you go. It's something that we need to deal with because when you hit the refresh button, what's supposed to happen is inside of dot local state and quick shell, you can see that this is the wallpapers and there's a current wallpaper dot text that gets generated. And that unfortunately is not doing what it should. And neither is the reset button, which is unfortunate. So yeah, that's a thing. But here are the current wallpapers, as you can see here. So if I delete this, what happens if I delete to trash? Because I gotta make sure that it actually functions, right? Is it actually gonna see everything? If I had it working before. There we go. Okay, so it sees 41 Paul papers now. There's the moon. And I believe the antelope is in here somewhere. There's the antelope there. So it, it did it did get the new one, which is nice, and then it updates. I do have to make that refresh button, delete these, or regenerate these. I don't know which. But uh yeah, you have a lot of control now, which is what matters. I did some cleanup on the media section as well. So if we go in here, I open this up. This is Cider. It's an Apple Music player for Linux. Hit the play button. I'll hear the tunage, but you won't. So everything's on less and cleaned up in that area. And did it also get the actual good? It did. Is it counting down? Yep, it's counting down when that counts down. So that's another thing that I wanted. So there's drop shadows on the logos right there. And uh, that's to help stand out for transparency. Most people don't know this, but this is blur and transparency right here. And if we actually go into settings and blur, we can put this down to like two. The blur pass of three. And uh, you'll notice that it's a lot more transparent now. But the drop shadows actually help everything stand out in a more transparent environment, which is the whole reason I did it. And it also looks really nice as well. Oh, yeah, that will just go away. It just crashed. Yep, that's completely random. Oh, well, it's supposed to auto restart, but it, it just doesn't. So starting this up is as simple as this. And it will either start up or it won't. It probably actually crashed because of how I originally started this up to begin with. So doing that, actually, that's probably a bad idea. I shouldn't have done that. I should have actually started it with an N symbol at the end. But yeah, now we're back. There we go. That's the first time I ever had that happen. It's really weird. I have made some changes to the sidebar. As you can see, they dynamically scale according to the amount of width that they need. So these bars are reduced in width overall, unless you're in certain tabs and stuff as well. And uh, the buttons will, of course, dynamically grow so they stay with you. Same thing happens for this side. See that? They'll dynamically grow. Um, I'm still working on this, so most people don't know, but I have a laptop. It's this one right here. I have a desktop. It took me ages to save for all of this. Okay, being disabled, you really have to put on a lot of savings to get things done and working. And um, I need my desktop environment that I'm building, that's what this is, to scale with me. So what that means is it needs to scale to my laptop and it needs to scale to my desktop. So uh, the the weekdays are for the desktop, and then everything I do. On the weekdays, I reconfigure to scale down to the laptop. And then when you bring it back to the desktop, it, it automatically still fits. And I'm doing scaling according to resolution. So basically, if I go back to the desktop, this will scale up according to my actual uh, 1440p resolution, which is very nice and fun to do. Yeah. The weather is based on where you are in the world. 
So what that means essentially is it will pinpoint you to about a foot away from your door. And it will tell you the exact weather of where you are right now versus in just a generalized area. So if I actually look at my phone, yep, a high of 22. So we're currently at the high for today. And that's something I really, really wanted. I wanted an accurate weather source. And that's why we have this. I've also completely redone the weather. Once again, this is like, what, my fifth time? And uh, it now properly functions. It's got good spacing. It's very readable. It tells the possible percentage of uh, precipitation. It will also tell you snow, uh, rain, shine, whatever. And this will dynamically be pulled back and forth according to uh, this temperature and that temperature. So the more dramatic it is and so on, the more the pull. So that should make it easy. This is something you would have to change. This is a string. So all the information is pulled from your IP using Geo. And uh, this is unfortunately hard coded until I can find a way to not have it be hard coded. Yeah. And again, I've changed this so it only shows Canadian holidays for me because that's where I am. But if you're in the United States, it will show United States uh, holidays. If you're in Europe, it will show you there. So wherever you are, it will show you your holidays. So it shows me my country holidays, and it also shows me my local holidays. And it also shows me my lunar cycle. Look at that. 23rd, 24th, 25th, and 26th are all going to be a new moon. That is insane. That is a very, very long new moon. And you'll also notice that I believe there was a no moon recently, or is it coming up soon? Uh, what is this? This is a full moon. This is another new moon. Uh, a no moon is very rare, so it's it's weird that uh, there's none here, because I, I believe I saw a couple a few months ago, but again, you can have your entire year planned out of lunar cycles and stuff like that. I don't know. I just figured it'd be extra interesting to have that. Now, I do have some consistency, some inconsistencies when it comes to theming. I accidentally pulled the windows, uh, but I will be correcting this. I don't really want to change it. I think it looks good the way it is right now, and it just allows me to see everything properly without having uh, too much transparency around. But this glassy thing is what I'm used to when it comes to both Windows and to Mac OS, so it's sort of a mix of both. This is why we also have a start menu. Uh, Graphics, internet, multimedia, office, system, utilities, all here. It all just works out really well. So this is today's video. I'm sorry I didn't get out a video yesterday. I also released a short. Uh, it's about my history with Arch Linux, of why I chose Arch Linux. Uh, go check that out, and I will see you guys next time. Leave a comment. Uh, tell me what you think, you know? This is still completely work in progress. I have a lot of stuff that I still need to go over and to implement and fix and more. And I will be doing that very soon. So yeah, my plan is to have this be a complete experience, a complete desktop environment using Quickshell. So I want all the same settings as a desktop environment without being over bloated and overwhelming like ADE settings. I don't want none of that. I want it clean, I want it to the point, I want it organized. That's what I want to do. So this current chaos that I have right now is I need to make sure all of this works before I can hook it up into something that is finalized and that functions, okay? So it's sort of prep for the next step. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. Uh, if you're new here, subscribe. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. And leave a comment for the algorithm, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.